The GOP race is moving straight ahead, but the candidates all over the place flip-flopping on issues and leaving Tea Party voters still looking for Mr. Wright. The latest reversal comes from Herman Cain. He says he's against abortion, but recently sounded almost pro-choice. It's not the government's role or anybody else's role to make that decision. It ultimately gets down to a choice that that family or that mother has to make. Not me as president, not some politician, not, not a bureaucrat. Conservatives were furious about that, and today Cain went into damage control mode. I was misinterpreted when I was talking about the whole abortion thing. I am pro-life from conception, no exceptions. I will not, I will sign anything to defund Planned Parenthood. I would rather correct something that I said than to try and leave it out there when it's such that it could be misinterpreted. We're so glad you clarified that. Meanwhile, the GOP's king flip-flopper, Willard Mitt Romney, was out today telling voters about his stance on gun control. Or should I say his latest stance on gun control? I believe in the Second Amendment, and uh, I don't believe there are any new laws that we need to put in place that relate to, uh, uh, to, to, to guns at this stage. We have the, all the laws that are necessary in that regard. We just need to enforce them. As governor, I worked closely with the NRA and the Gun Owners Action League. I don't line up 100 percent with the NRA. I don't see eye to eye with the NRA in every issue. I supported the assault weapon ban. Can any of the Republican frontrunners keep their story straight? Nope. Look, I've always thought that HPV was an issue of life. I've looked at it as an issue of saving life. I still look at it as that. The Gardasil issue for me was one of cancer. And I made a mistake. Careful, guys. Republican voters might start flip-flopping on which one of you they'll support. Joining me now is the one and only Bob Trump, Democratic strategist for, and New York University professor and former senior advisor to the Kerry and Gore campaigns, and Aaron McPike, uh, Aaron, a reporter for Real Clear Politics. Thank you both for joining me tonight. Bob, how much do these reverses hurt the candidates in their hardcore GOP base? Well, they, well, they hurt, and, and, you know, this whole sense of Romney as a guy who's flip-flopped on everything. Actually, I think flip-flopper is an unfair word for him. He's actually a shape-shifter. <laughs> he, he, hasn't, he hasn't just moved on gun control. Look, he shifted on abortion rights. He shifted on gay rights. He shifted on uh, TARP. He's been for it and against it. He shifted on almost every issue you can name, and, and he's had five different positions on Libya. You know, he's like the politician that H.L. Mencken described. If he discovered he had cannibals among his constituents, he'd promise the missionaries for Sunday supper. <laughs> Aaron, when you look at, let me show you this uh, poll here, that Republican voters said their priorities in selecting a nominee, 67% said that they wanted the one closest to their views. Only 31% said they want the one that can beat President Obama. This is a Wall Street Journal poll. Now, if this is true, Aaron, doesn't that mean that if you are a flip-flopper and over two-thirds of your party wants someone that they feel really believes in what they believe, this would certainly weaken you in states like Iowa and other states that are true believers when they have to question whether you really believe what you're saying. It does. That tracks closely with the numbers that you're seeing in support of Mitt Romney right now. He's got this floor or ceiling, we're not sure, of about 25 percent in some of these early states and nationally. So, yes, he's having some trouble convincing conservative voters that he's one of them. But as for the flip-flopping... Republican sources in some of the early states like Iowa and South Carolina are telling me that's a bigger problem for Kane because flip-flopping from one decade to the next kind of goes away and people have accepted that with Mitt Romney. That's part of his identity, but it's been vetted and dealt with. With Kane, this flip-flopping day-to-day and hour-to-hour, -hour, they say, is more damaging for a front-runner. Now, let me ask you something, Bob, uh, since she brought up Kane. I hate to uh, shock and amaze you, as Muhammad Ali used to say, 
But he changed 999 today to 909, talking about mm -hmm. flip-flopping. Uh, let me show you uh, Mr. Kane just changed his theme. If you add up below the poverty level, your plan isn't 999. It's 909. Say amen, y'all. Amen. 909. In other words, if you are at or below the poverty level based upon family size, because there's a different number for each one, then you don't pay that middle nine tax on your income. This is how we help the poor. Nine, nine, nine. <laughs> but if you live below poverty, nine, zero, nine. Say amen, Bob. Well, listen, the guy got in trouble on this. His plan got torn apart, not just by liberals and progressives, but by conservatives and by the Wall Street Journal. But, look, Herman Cain is daffy, he's wacky, he's engaging at some level, interesting to some people. I think he reflects the resistance to Romney that, that, that we, Aaron was talking about a minute ago, right. that he's about 25 percent. They've been shopping for somebody else. Uh, but the party isn't going to nominate him unless it completely loses its head. I mean, President Obama would romp to victory over Herman Cain. You know, Rick Perry is a real conservative. I mean, I'll give him that. I think he's kind of slow. He's inarticulate. He's not good in debates. He's a real conservative, but he deviates on a couple of issues, at least he has in the past. And the, this Republican Party this year is the modern equivalent of the medieval Inquisition. You're not allowed to deviate at all or you get burned at the stake. You don't have a good choice in welcoming matches <laughs> to his ranches either. But let me ask you this. Aaron, uh, when you look at uh, the fact that we're in the middle of some serious foreign affairs uh, uh, with this country, the war in Iraq uh, winding down, now the president uh, announcing the day of withdrawal of the troops, the uh, Libya uh, situation, how do you think American voters, including Republicans in the primaries, are going to look when you have a man like Mr. McCain that takes lightly whether or not he would even know the, the president of a foreign country's name? I mean, let me show you what he says. I don't know if this is cute, given the climate that's going on all over the world. I'm ready for the gotcha questions, and they are already starting to come. And when they ask me who's the president of you, Becky, 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 Stan, Stan, I'm going to say, you know, I don't know. Knowing who is the head of some of these small, insignificant states around the world, I don't think that is something that's critical to focusing on national security and getting this economy going. Given where we are in terms of a lot of the global crisis, isn't that a little too flippant even for right wing voters, Eric? He's not ready for the gotcha questions, but you bring up an interesting point as far as foreign affairs are concerned. John Huntsman is the only candidate who's really worked deeply in foreign affairs before as he was Obama's ambassador to China. But some of the other candidates don't don't have much. Mitt Romney was in Afghanistan earlier this year and he hasn't really talked about it yet, but he doesn't have much in the way of experience. He did run the Olympics in 2002 and he can count that among his national security credentials. But R Rick Perry has some experience having uh, been a pilot in the Air Force, so he can claim as th he's the only candidate with some military service. But these candidates don't have much to go on when it comes to foreign affairs. And so when they come up against a commander in chief who has had some of the successes that he's had recently, yes, the Republican Party has a deficiency in that area right now. Let me ask you, Bob, you ran national campaigns. Now, I, I want to ask you quickly two part question. Rick Santorum seems to have everything they want in terms of the Tea Party. You know, he's a real conservative, extreme positions today, even dealing with contraception is a dangerous, uh, uh, I mean, just all kinds of stuff. Why isn't he taking off 2% in the polls? And where do you see the race at this point? Is this still Romney's race in terms of the Republican nomination? Yeah, on Santorum, I think that he is just an implausible president, even though he served in the Senate for 12 years. I think people think he can't beat Obama, and they may want someone close to their views more than they want someone who can beat Obama, but they don't want someone they know can't beat Obama, and I think that's Santorum's situation. He does okay in these debates, and he has no money. I don't think he's going to go anywhere. Look, it's Romney's 
mostly because all the other candidates are more deficient than he is. Uh, Perry uh, may have left an indelible impression on Social Security, with his opening debate performances, with what he said on immigration. I don't think Cain can stand this scrutiny. Cain may actually, in the end, though, prove to be Romney's best friend in the nominating process, because Cain may strip enough votes away from Perry or someone else who might challenge Romney so that Romney can get through. Now, Cain's also a threat because in the general election, if he hasn't completely destroyed himself, he conceivably could go out there and run as a third-party candidate and pull votes away from Romney as the Republican nominee. Maybe, Aaron, and then he'd run on 009. We'd be down <laughs> another nine by then. Bob Schramm and Aaron McPike, thanks for your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you.